Okay. Are you ready to rumble? You ready? I think so. After my saved folder is just pooping the bed, but I um I think I'm I think I'm good. We're starting. I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared. Okay. <laughs> Hence the emotional support animals. There is at least five times sitting here that I wasn't sure if we were starting. I know. It was like a tug of war back and mm. forth. Okay, I'm ready. Nope. Mm -mm. nope. Not working. I was like, so how's your day? Just to have small talk. She's like, bad. <laughs> like, cool. Good talk. <laughs> no, it just has been a really, really busy day. I overcommitted myself and I've just been running in circles, taking calls, taking meetings, preparing stuff. Mm. Uh, it's, it's just like nonstop. I'm, I'm also, I, on nights that episodes come out, I have a really hard time falling asleep. Mm. So I post the episode around midnight and then I still don't go to bed until 4 a.m. And then yeah. I wake up at 10 a.m. Yeah. to make sure nothing is wrong with the episode. Oof. Most days it is. There's a glitch in the audio. So it's just... How was it today? Uh, there was like a little issue with an ad I recorded, but mm. audio was fine. So I was like, oh, it's fine. No one's, no one's going to notice. Okay. Yeah. No one's going to notice. It's all good. Nice. But... I don't know why I decided to do this theme after having such a rough day because the theme I have for you today is deep wounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're just stories that I just like, I didn't really have a theme for, but I knew I liked and I was like, uh -huh. well, overall there seems like there could be some trauma that stems from this. Okay. So deep wounds it is. Okay. Let's okay. do it. Let's dive in. Um, I just need like five seconds to like, apparently if you Superman pose before you do something important, it sex sets you up for success. I've heard that like a decade ago. Is yeah. that still true? <laughs> yeah. Apparently you will like perform better on a test and everything. I just watched a bunch of Spider-Man movies. Okay. And I've never watched the last one with Tom Holland. Yeah. What? There's, there's like three with Tom Holland. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. There's been so many Spider-Man remakes. Honestly, the last one was really good. I love how they tie it all together. I gotta watch. You haven't watched? No, did you just give me a spoiler? <laughs> Fuck you, Lauren. It's fine. Okay, up first. How did this only get 301 upvotes? I'm shocked. Oh, because it sucks. Like, they're an asshole. Mm. Am I the asshole? Way to give it away. Well, you're gonna know right away. <laughs> just based on the title. Okay, let's hear it. Am I the asshole for suggesting my pregnant sister should put her baby up for adoption? My 31 female sister, 27 female, was married to A for three years. Prior to their elopement, they were on and off for about four years. Because of their unstable relationship, my sister never introduced him to our family until they were married. I'm trying to fight the yawn. Our family is very tight-knit and traditional, so with this late introduction, me and my family never formed a close bond with brother-in-law, and our relationship was strained because of it. About a month ago, my sister called me and told me that brother-in-law was in the ICU at the hospital, being treated after he was hit by a drunk driver. He unfortunately passed a few days after, and my sister was understandably devastated. My sister held a funeral for brother-in-law, and my parents graciously offered to cover the cost of the funeral and burial. A week after the funeral, my sister didn't show up to my mother's 60th birthday party, which was odd since she helped me and my brother, 34 male, plan the party. I went over to her house after the event was over to check on her, and found her place a mess. There was takeout boxes and trash spread around the entire kitchen and an entire sink full of dirty dishes. I offered to help clean since my sister was in a rough state. While I was cleaning, she began to tell me that her and brother-in-law had been trying to conceive for the past year and were unsuccessful, but she was late and decided to take a test today, and it came back positive. I asked her if she was sure, and she said she was confident and that she was going to schedule an appointment with her doctor. I told her not to get her hopes up until the doctor confirmed the results with her. For the past few weeks, I hadn't heard anything about my sister's quote, pregnancy. So I thought it was a false positive and that the signs were just from the stress of her loss. Today, 
During our Sunday dinner with our parents, my husband and brother and sister-in-law and their kids, my sister announced that she was pregnant. My parents were shocked, to say the least, and my sister-in-law immediately began congratulating my sister. After the dinner, I asked my sister if we could talk in private and brought her away from the rest of the family. I expressed my concerns to her and asked if she was truly prepared to be a mother right now, if she can't even take care of herself. My sister got mad at the comment and said I have no right to comment on how she chooses to grieve and that her baby is the last piece of her late husband. I asked her if she was truly prepared to be a single mother, even though it would ruin any chance of her moving on, since no man wants to date a single mom. I suggested that she should put the baby up for adoption so that it could be in a healthy, stable home with two parents. She stormed off and told the rest of my family what I had said to her. My family thinks that I'm the asshole, and my husband thinks I should have chosen a better time to talk to her about this. But I don't really think I am the asshole for trying to protect my sister. She is still so young, and she shouldn't have the burden of taking care of a dead man's child alone. Jesus. How heartless. That's great that she thinks she's protecting her sister, but I don't... How do you think that you have the right? Like, this is not your life. And you... This just blows my mind. Isn't it just like wild, the things that run through some people's heads? I always think about that. I always think about how like differently their neurons are firing to like make them behave this way and say this stupid shit. Right. And if anything, if she was worried about her sister not being able to process things correctly because she's grieving and she wanted to look out for her sister, then she could say like, hey, like, I just want to make sure that you understand like all of everything. I want to talk through this with you. Like, how can I support you? Like, you know, it's it's going to be hard. Are you prepared? Like, you know, how can I help you? Yeah, that's what fucking family's yeah. for. But to be like, you know what? You should consider adoption. So you're going to force her to be pregnant for nine months, yeah. go through labor, and then just give the baby up? Absolutely not. Why would she put herself through that? So... There is another Reddit story that I have found, and it is a very similar situation. And the woman lost her husband in an accident and decided to have an abortion. And like, she just didn't want, she couldn't do it alone. She was so heartbroken over the loss of her husband. She didn't want to do it. But like, Mm -hmm. she's excited. She said she's excited and happy. Right. So why even bring that up to her? Yeah. Also, like her not showing up to the mom's birthday party a week after That's totally acceptable. Yeah. And like, oh, there's takeout all over the house. Her husband (laughs) died a week ago. At least she's eating. Oh, my God. I I, Yeah, I forgot that it was that. That is insanity. A week. How can you, to even judge anyone slightly at that point in their lives? Like, who are you? And I agree with you. At least she's eating. This is crazy. I would hope, like, I I know I would just be a mess in this like I just can't even think I can't even put myself there so it's just like I I would I would be catatonic yeah I would be completely just out of my mind insane you would have to I need a padded room yeah I really do and I I don't mean that lightly like I'm I definitely want a padded room yeah I soundproof just give me I wouldn't give a fuck what anyone in the world thought about me while I'm grieving that that's That's insane to have the people that are closest to you come into your home and then judge you for it and decide that you're unfit to be a mother. Absolutely not. No. I don't even know how I would be able to... I don't know how my relationship would be able to come back from that. And I don't think it would. And it it sucks because it's like, it seems like she's her intentions are in the right place. Maybe because she's like, I'm trying to protect my sister. But no. (laughs) Yeah. Just no. What would you do in that situation, by the way? Like, or what do you think you would do? You obviously don't know. But like, if you got pregnant with your husband and then he passed away, would you want to keep the baby if, if it was like... Yeah, because I don't think like, yeah, I had, you know, Jerry, my dad in my life. But like my mom, for the most part, was a single mom. That's mm-hmm. how she, that's how we operated. Mm-hmm. Um, and my dad moved back to LA when I was still in middle school. So yeah. we operated like with a single mom I don't think any family needs two parents Mm -hmm. to be whole and happy and have like healthy happy children I agree so that to me is just like that's not 
that's not a reason at all. I no. t- completely agree. And well, and I'm like, more, I'm more so meant like, would would it be too hard for you the grieving aspect like you said with the other woman i think that might be like the only thing that would keep me going right and that's I think how for, i feel like i would my brain would go to yeah and i think i think like i think it honestly i don't know i f- i feel like this one would be 50 50 and like i, I feel like it would save my life yeah like I save can, me from just like wanting to die yeah i can find that other story quick and like maybe read a blip of it just to like explain her reasoning of why she chose the other route yeah but i think like honestly people would be really like maybe 50 50 on that of like which way they would go but no i don't i totally understand too like i'm not i don't think it's crazy to go the other route that's why i asked you what you what you think you would do Um, yeah it's so crazy to even like think that way because like i obviously am not i don't think i'm pregnant cheers um but i don't know i just i it's hard to rationalize any like concept of that right now but i would probably especially if we were trying actively trying for a baby which she was she was struggling with infertility issues um but i like thought about it too when i when we were just talking now and i was like in my head i'm like nothing in life is guaranteed you could be married you could have three kids with someone and all of a sudden they could get cancer and be gone in a month you still have three kids like all on your own yeah regardless of like nothing in life is guaranteed yeah it's so unpredictable. So yeah. and I'm sure she'll if she wants to move on and love someone else down the road, being a single mom isn't going to stop someone. Yeah, the right person. And if that's no. what you got to follow your heart first and foremost. And then the person that loves you will be able to fit into that. Exactly. You don't just like give your baby up for adoption because you think it's going to be harder to date. Like that's not a good reason. I mean, if you do, if you want to like cool but if you if someone's telling you that you should so that you can date fuck that fuck those societal norms no i know Um, it's total bullshit i'm trying to find that one story too about the woman who traumatically lost her husband and it was something really weird where the sister was mad about her getting an abortion because the sister wanted to like adopt her baby or something but she was like no i can't do this but in the meantime of trying to find that one There's another post from three years ago. Would I be the asshole for getting an abortion after my husband dies? And basically, they've been trying to have a baby for two years. Um, They just found out recently that he has pancreatic cancer. He's permanently bedridden and very clearly sick. And so she doesn't want to be a single mother and doesn't think she can support a child on my own while grieving so much. Yeah, I mean, that's that's her choice i I know and i can i completely see both sides yeah i i completely see needing to just like curl up in a ball in your own grief and not get out of bed for a month and just yeah for sure fade away for a little bit i don't know if i would shut down or go so like i need to get away i need to travel i need to be busy i don't know know what way i would go i think i might shut down i mean actually i don't know it's hard to say so hard yeah (laughs) but i think i would do the catatonic route like i said earlier i think i would really like Cause I just get really blue and I just like sit in my bed for days and just like, like on Monday, I think it was Monday. Yeah, definitely Monday. I have this app on my phone I've been playing and I literally sat in bed all day, woke up at noon, played Peggle for a little bit, went to, took a nap, played Peggle some more, went to bed. I like couldn't convince myself to move. And I think that it's good sometimes to be able to just let yourself be lazy and not feel guilty about it because one thing that's really annoying is when I'm I'm like I this is what I want right now but I'm I'm feeling guilty the entire time like I want a Sunday of just watching movies being by myself but I feel like I feel guilty and it's annoying it's just like no I I don't need to feel guilty if this is what I want if this is what I need if this is making me happy yeah then this is what I'm gonna do like there's no wrong or right way like yes being productive is looked at as great I, I know this one girl who went through a breakup and I was so I was like, damn, good for you because she went through a breakup. She was like, it was so miserable. And then she ended up running a marathon and like getting promoted twice in work and like get, making so much money and just like traveling. And, and I was just like, this is amazing. Like, She's just doing all these like she's like, yeah, I channeled all of my mourning into activities. I was like, good for you. I guess one, that's a productive way to deal yeah, with it. Right? I. I think that's amazing. And like, I'm like that after a breakup, like after a breakup, I need to stay busy. Mm -hmm. I cannot be left alone because I'm like, 
it's not that I'm going to like reach out or text them or mm-hmm. like anything like that. It's just like, I just need to like keep moving in that sense. Cause it's like, I need a little bit of no time one, to myself. Cause I feel like I'll, I'll, if I, if people like push me to go out, like, t- or do something, I feel like dead weight sometimes. It's okay though. I'm just like floating on the universe and I'm like, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> I don't belong. <laughs> just taking up space. <laughs> but sometimes it's okay to take up space. Like the last time when I was really sad um, uh, about something, I I went to a, a plant nursery with a friend and I was literally just like, what am I doing here? <laughs> it's like, get me home. Oh my God. You couldn't even handle plant I know, shopping? And I love plant shopping. Oh my God. Well, top comment on this one. Even if she hadn't said such a horrible thing, she would still be a truly terrible sister. What kind of, quote, tight-knit family isn't regularly checking up on their sister slash daughter after a traumatic loss like that? So true. And then once she sees her sister is struggling like crazy, doesn't check check up on her again until weeks later, OP's definition of tight-knit is clearly wonky as fuck. Terrible asshole. (laughs) Terrible asshole. Um, someone goes tight knit and traditional is a totally different animal than simply tight knit. Traditional means we are nice to you when you behave. Ooh, I love that. Wow. <laughs> we are nice to you. My sister says this about certain people. Yeah. Um, there's there are certain people in the world that they will love you and they're so nice to you as long as you're doing what they like. The minute that it's something that deviates from exactly like their preference, the way that they want to talk about anything that's going on in the world, they don't like you anymore at all. Um, so that whole traditional comment, I love that. That's insanity. Wow. Okay, moving along. I think I need to buy Snuggies. Ooh. Because I think I need like a blanket on me, but I also need to move my arms for, oh God, I forgot this was over here. That could have been bad. Yeah, like I want this like here, but then I also want it around me. Also, if you um, are watching on YouTube today, Lauren and I are wearing animal hats, obviously, as we said, for emotional support. Um, Those of you that are listening, you probably wouldn't know that until now, but I'm wearing a horse because, of course, and Lauren's got a little ram on, which like lambs are my favorite too. And then we have these Bigfoot earrings on our glasses. We're using them as like, I don't know what you call this, drink decorations. Mm -hmm. What do you call them usually though? They make them for like wine glasses, wine glass decorators. God, what are they called? Ornaments, wine ornaments. That sounds really good. Yeah. I like that. Something like that. So this is from an amazing artist, a listener that sent them our way, Redland Creative. She has an Etsy. Taria, thank you so much. Um, We love them and we're using them as our like other little mascot today. So thank you. Okay. Now moving along. Am I the asshole for not choosing to spend my birthday with my kids? I, female 37, am a mom of four kids, two girls, 19 and 14, and two boys, 16 and 12. My 19-year-old daughter and I got into an argument about a week and a half ago over my birthday, and now none of my kids will speak to me. My birthday was on Friday, and I had planned to spend the entire weekend with my boyfriend because he wanted to treat me since it would be my first birthday that we were together. I didn't hear at all from any of my kids besides the casual text the whole week, and I assumed they probably weren't planning on seeing me or had forgotten. My 19-year-old was usually the one to plan my birthdays after I divorced their dad two years ago, but I didn't hear from her, so I made my plans and stuck with them. On Friday, I didn't get a single happy birthday text from my kids. This made me a little sad, but again, I just assumed that teenagers will be teenagers, and they were busy. They told me they were staying at their dad's this weekend. My boyfriend picked me up from work and drove me home so I could change into something nicer because we had plans to go out to dinner. When we got to my apartment and walked in the door, the light suddenly turned on and my kids jumped and yelled, surprise. Turns out they hadn't forgotten and all four of my kids were there and they had decorated my apartment with all types of balloons and decorations. I was so happy that they hadn't forgotten. And my 19-year-old gave me a big hug and said she was sorry. They made me think they had forgot. I gave them all big hugs and kisses for being so sweet to me. But then I told them about my boyfriend and I's dinner plans. My kids were upset that I wasn't staying. I apologized and told them I had made plans because I didn't think we were doing anything together. 
My 19-year-old requested to move the party to the next night, but I told them I couldn't because I had plans for the entire weekend with my boyfriend. They then asked if they could at least go to dinner with us, and I told them no on account that my boyfriend does not like children. (laughs) Go on. And him and my 19-year-old do not get along, so this would be very awkward. At this point, my 19-year-old got very upset and started to argue with my boyfriend for stealing me away on my birthday and also at me for not even wanting to spend time with them. I tried to tell them that it was my birthday and I was allowed to spend it how I wanted and I got to spend it with them every year and that this year was special. My 19-year-old again started to yell and by then my boyfriend stepped in and told her to stop acting like a brat and then all of my kids started yelling at us. We ended up leaving and going to dinner, and I did spend the weekend with him, but my kids are very mad at this and are now staying exclusively with their dad for the time being. Good. Was it so wrong to want to spend my birthday how I wanted to? Fuck you. (laughs) This is some, like, deep, this can cause deep-seated resentment. Oh, God, yeah. If my mom, I can't imagine if my mom did this to me, I would be fucking heartbroken like i'm putting myself in this situation as a child if i was 19 years old too like or any of the ages the youngest is 12 that is heartbreaking are you kidding me like i get the first part at first i was like okay yeah like she thought they forgot and she made these plans she was kind of sad cool you know she's excited about her boyfriend but then it's like they surprised her and then they're like well okay like we we understand you can't do the surprise party now but like what can we do the rest of the weekend Sorry, I'm busy this entire time. Like, how how obsessed are you with this guy? Like, how boy crazy are you that, like, that you're going to choose him over your children? And not only that, like, I'm sorry, he doesn't like you. So you can't come to dinner? The fact that she said that out loud. Also, isn't that my a mom red would, flag my for mom, you? My mom would never. My mom literally was like, even people that were like, I love kids. When she was dating, she was like, I honestly like this is her own preference. She's like, I want to date people that have kids because that that's just my preference, right? Like they get it. Yeah. They get the sacrifice that it takes to right. be a parent. Right. They get that you're gonna be competing with kids wanting time. Yeah. yeah. My but dad She would never, she would never. But that's I know some people can make it work. Some people that don't have kids can step into a step parent role yeah. and be fine. But it's not for everyone. And my dad dealt with a lot of women that would literally be like, it's a problem. They're not even your kids because we're technically not. He adopted us. And so a lot of women would be like, you're choosing your kids over me. You're not spending enough time with me. Mm -hmm. It's like, he's a dad. Yeah. First and foremost. Right. Right. How is this not a red flag to this woman that her boyfriend is fighting a child? 19 is still young. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like the 19-year-old is kind of being a mom to all the other ones. Yeah. 12 is so little. Honestly, that's so sad. But And I, just for the record, (laughs) I completely agree. We've talked about this in an episode a long time ago, but I absolutely agree. Like, I I would date somebody who had kids, probably, given the the circumstances. Like, I don't think that you need to have kids to be compatible with another person. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But that, but that was my mom's thing. And to me, we always used to say that's extreme. Like to my mom growing up, we would be like, we don't care. We don't care if they don't get it. As long as they're a good person, like date whoever you want, mom. Yeah. But that was just her own little rule. And I've seen rules like that for other circumstances though, like widowers, widowers like will only date a widower Mm. because they understand, like, look at how many Reddit stories we've had come up where new partners are worried about a ghost. Mm. They're competing with the dead when they don't need to. Yeah. So there are standards that people set for themselves. Yeah. That's totally, totally fine. fine. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. If you know what you want, don't settle. Right. You don't have to make sacrifices. Yeah. And I was just using that as a reference point to show, like, how crazy I think this is that this woman is more than okay with this man not liking kids first of all and then second of all not liking his her daughter like specifically yeah how could you date him and and bad vibes and like if you did date him how could you not want to work on it because it's like okay this sucks but we're gonna figure it out they're gonna come to dinner with us and you guys are gonna work your shit out come on you make 
You're selfish. I don't care. I don't care if it's your birthday. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's different this year. This year is special because I have a boyfriend. <laughs> Lady. Yeah. Get your shit together. Yeah. I think it's like when I was reading this, I was in my head. I'm like, oh, they booked an extravagant hotel room. I thought a weekend getaway. A weekend getaway. Yeah. And the hotel is non-refundable. They have a thousand dollars out on the line or whatever. They're like literally leaving the city to go somewhere. More that that is understandable. Yeah. But oh, hey, we're going to dinner. It's like, why can't we come, mom? We're going to Chili's and the reservation is only for two. Tomorrow we're going to Chuck E. Cheese. We and- have half off <laughs> apps at Applebee's. <laughs> You cannot come. Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, sorry. This one just really grinded my gears. Okay, so what is the mom? I want to know the mom's like reaction when because everyone else is saying like, what the fuck, right? Yeah, so. I want to hear her like being either defending herself or realizing like, yeah, maybe that wasn't cool. Yeah, so top comment is my boyfriend does not like children and him like they're quoting her. Mm -hmm. So the top comment quotes her and says, my boyfriend does not like children and him and my 19 year old do not get along. You're the asshole. Your boyfriend does not like children yet. You have three minor kids. Mm -hmm. He also separately does not get along with your only adult child, meaning you are dating a man who doesn't like any of your four children. Clearly you are saying loud and clear to your children that getting laid is more important to you than any of them. (laughs) This isn't about what happened this past weekend. It's about your general priorities and how skewed they are. Agreed. Next comment. I raised my brows there. If someone doesn't like kids, dating someone who has at least one is not a deal breaker for them? Question mark. She's got four. Yeah. Three that are minors. I don't get this. This doesn't compute in my brain. Most awarded. Um, So this is after the edit, it looks like. Um, and they say, I don't even care about the edit at all. Making excuses for him. Who dates someone that doesn't even like children when they have children? And then surprise Pikachu face. They're mad she chose Dick over them. There wasn't an edit when I found this one. So let's do it. Edit. You all do not understand how the dynamic between my children works. Uh, Sorry, I need to have less of a tone. I'm just angry at her. (laughs) I usually try to do a good job being like unbiased as I read. But like, wow, the sass. I was like totally bought in though. I was like, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely how she sounds. That's (laughs) fucking right on, bitch. (laughs) My 19 year old is like their ringleader and they follow what she says. She did not like my boyfriend from the beginning before he could ever have done anything to warrant her dislike of him. She pulled mean pranks on him at the beginning by convincing all of her siblings to call my boyfriend Fat Matt behind his back. Of course, when he found out about this, he was upset and felt incredibly disrespected. My boyfriend is 31. Since y'all want to know, he does respect that I have kids. He just does not want children. And I'm done having kids. So that's why this isn't a problem for us. Okay, so he doesn't... 7 minus 19? Oh, don't do this to me. Wait. I got the calculator. 37 minus 19. Okay, so she had her oldest at 18. Because I was like, wait, he's 31 and she's got four kids, 19. What's the age gap? But okay, okay. The math is, it's still math in. Okay. It's not too bad. Um, wait, n- she's, he's, she's how old? 37. Okay. He's 31. Okay. Next edit. Okay, I get that you all have made up your mind on me. And that's fine because I did post on here, but please know that you all do not know everything, only a little part of my life. When I posted this, I asked if I was the asshole because I didn't choose to stay with them. But many of you have started to attack me for my dating life, and I think that's unfair. Mm. Your dating life directly impacted the fact that you didn't stay with your kids. Your dating life is in question because it's, it's directly causing you to neglect your obligations as a parent. Right. Kids want to celebrate with their parents. Yeah. Kids want their birthdays celebrated with their parents. Yeah. Their children. I was like, I feel I just want to hug each of these kids because if I were in that situation, it would it would make me so fucking sad. Like I'm because I'm a family, I grew up a family of four. And so it's like You get it. Yeah, I'm picturing it and it. I would be bawling my eyes out and picture myself as a 12-year-old and just being heartbroken. Yeah. I would never let someone dangerous around my kids. 
I was in contact with my kids the week before my birthday, but they never asked or inquired about my birthday plans. I realized a little later I should have told them I was going to be gone that weekend, but I thought it would be fine because they were all spending the week with their dad. They all have keys to my place and they are never there alone for more than a day or so. Plus, my 16 and 19-year-old are usually there with their younger siblings. I should never have posted on here. At the end of the day, it is always on the mother to be the angel and always make perfect decisions. My ex-husband isn't a saint either. He didn't contact me about my kids or if they were going to spend time with me for my birthday. Because it was a surprise. I don't like know the relationship there, but like it comes a point where like you're responsible for your own relationship with your children, especially after a divorce. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I And that's the thing is like I... I feel kind of bad now because I'm sure all of this attacking, she's probably feeling really shitty. And it's yeah. not her intention to be a shitty mom. Like, she could be the most wonderful mom ever. Like, we don't know what she's like. No, we're just um, talking about this one situation. We're just situation. talking about this one situation. And, like, everyone is kind of coming at her as, like, a mother as a whole. <laughs> so, like, I do feel I feel. I feel for her in that aspect because it's like, okay, she met someone, she fell in love. Like we've all been there where it's like we have these like tunnel vision on and we're just so obsessed that we kind of forget other priorities around us. Um, So I don't, I'm not, I don't think that she's a bad mom. I'm not saying she's a bad mom at all. Or She was just shitty in this. Yeah. In this moment. For sure. This circumstance. Yeah. In this moment. It's like, it's like. Car- carve out some type of time like the entire yeah. weekend you can't like cancel one thing literally make it sunday and like to, sunday night do a nice dinner yeah and go, also go to the movies with them like to have kids in your teens that desperately want to spend time with you yeah that's a blessing like it <laughs> you know <laughs> seriously and put in the effort to surprise yeah which they committed like i think she should have the minute that she knew like oh i'm planning stuff my kids don't want to be with me she should have said Hey, you guys, just so you know, I am planning on, you know, going away for the weekend. She could have easily done that. And then they could have like. Wait, so she did go away or like she had plans, okay. like whatever. I thought she <laughs> she thought, didn't. I, she I just went she out to dinner. She of Chuck E. Cheese and TGI Chili's, Fridays. Chili's, <laughs> which Applebee's actually does sound really good right Dude, now. Dude, I love those places. Boneless wings. <laughs> I used to go all the, but that we're obviously, we're making a joke because yeah. they're so casual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm just like envisioning where it would have yeah. been easy to like tack people on. Otherwise, like why the fuss of not bringing them? And restaurants, like unless you book on open table and it's your third no call, no show cancellation, you're not at risk for anything. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of places don't ask for your credit card on file. Like you'll be fine to Mm -hmm. cancel and go somewhere that your kids can go. But I will say like, you kind of made me think about the fact she did have her kids young at 18. This is probably her first real like time experiencing like dating as like an adult. That's such a good point. And maybe she's getting too wrapped up in that. I didn't even put that together. That like crossed my mind when Mm -hmm. you said that. But I also am getting kind of the vibe that she relies on her older kids to parent the younger ones. Yeah. Based on her saying. Ringleader. Um, well, ringleader because they respect her and maybe look up to her like more of a mom figure. But they are never alone for more than a day or so. Plus, my 16 and 19 year old are usually there with their younger siblings. So it sounds like she leaves, stays at the boyfriend's yeah. house for a day or two. And they're at yeah. her house by themselves. And that might be that actually makes a lot of sense. Like she is she's dating now like she's being young she's dating a younger guy she's actually like going out and doing these things like she's experiencing something that she missed because she had babies so young yeah but I also like you have split custody and when you have a 12 year old like your 12 year old should not be alone with their with their older siblings parenting them you have split custody you spend nights at your boyfriend's house when your kids are with your ex-husband at least that's the expectation I would want or like I think would be more normal but I don't know I don't I don't know I definitely was alone a lot like as a I feel like as a 12 year old yeah no this happened to me I definitely (laughs) I definitely got left alone with my younger brother and had to do this stuff and yeah it's just it's a lot to ask of your other kids I guess I don't really I wouldn't really know because I didn't go through that. I don't really know what's right or wrong because it's kind of like, oh, we all pull weight. We're a family. You know what I mean? But it is kind yeah. of interesting where it's like, well, what is too much to expect your children to watch your other children? Yeah. You know, like what is being a family and what is like taking advantage? You know, 
It's a fine line. <laughs> really fine line. Well, that was that was a nice like character development. I feel like I have a bigger heart for her now. <laughs> I I still think she fucked up in that yeah, situation. Yeah, no, I don't agree with it. But like overall, I think she's probably just trying to do her best and yeah. is infatuated by this guy. I know, but it's not the, it's not an excuse in my head. But I will say, like the one comment that definitely I definitely don't think it's an excuse. No, yeah, and like the one comment I do kind of see with is like. At the end of the day, it's always on the mother to be the angel and make the perfect decisions, which I do agree. I think we yeah. hold mothers a higher standard mm -hmm. to a higher standard than fathers. Right. And totally like a lot of the emotional labor and like a lot does fall on moms yeah. typically or mother figures. Or but if this was a story about like if the dad did this, the oh, exact same story. We'd still be tearing his I, ass I would say the exact same thing. Absolutely. So it's like. Take the gender out if we. Yeah, I'm gonna do that for a theme. Ooh, I'm gonna take the gender out of it. I love that idea. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just not say the age and gender. Yeah. Um, I can say the age, but. But no, just in general, not a cool situation overall. You're probably trying to do your best and keep on chugging along. I hope you take some of this advice, though. Yeah. I don't know. Based on the comments, she seems... I mean, of course she's going to be defensive. It's like the internet is yeah. attacking her and like going after her like as a whole, you know, not yeah. just the situation. So, but I'm sure she'll probably reflect like... Absolutely. If she loves her kids, which I'm assuming she does. <laughs> yeah. Just sad. Hopefully, hopefully it gets better. It's just it's sad to not have your mom and feel like you're competing with a boyfriend or a significant other. Yeah. I've been there. I think you came with. There was one Father's Day where I wanted to like take my. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about this. This was like so traumatic for me, but there literally was a Father's Day where I wanted to take my dad out, and like you were a sibling basically, so you were different. But he was like, "I want to bring my girlfriend and her son," and I go, "But what does that have to do with you being a dad? Like this is Father's Day," and he goes, "Yeah, it's my day," and I'm like, "Cause she she offered to take him out." Yeah, but and like, so you were like, "No, I'm taking you out. It's Father's Day," and he was like, "Yeah, it's Father's Day. It's my day." And you were like, "No, your birthday is your day. Yeah, your Fa birthday. <laughs> Father's Day is technically for your kids to celebrate their parents. Yeah, whether that's Father's Day or Mother's Day. Yeah, it's technically like not your day. You're only a father because of me, bitch." <laughs> It's funny because I totally agreed. Like your logic makes complete sense, but at the same time, like I, because I went with too, yeah. And I was like, I don't. I mean, I didn't. You were, I think, care. you were a late addition though because she was coming and her, her son. So you invited me for a backup. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I hated her. She literally tried to like make my dad her son's dad after like that was so weird. Actually, like being friends for like three months and that's why she wanted to celebrate father's day with him yes because her dad didn't right. her son didn't have a dad because like he was born out of a really bad situation mm -hmm. and so which is if you think about it like it's i get it yeah he's a great dude but like it yeah he can be the internet's dad but like <laughs> it's different when you're like really trying to steal him i don't know it felt it felt wrong but, it, I mean, at least she was thinking about her son, you know? Even though it was, kind of, <laughs> it was a weird situation. But, like, she just wanted her son to have some male love. I think that's great, you know? Yeah. And celebrate Father's Day. If you think about it that way, that's really sweet. But he also was, like, a 13-year-old. And he's like, can I go skateboard now? <laughs> he wanted nothing to do no. with us. He didn't fucking care. No. It's like, take, take him out for a dinner another day. And then me and Morgan, like, I don't know, a few nights later, we're, like, walking down to, like, the gas station or something. And then, like, some kids are, like, skateboarding. And they're like, yo. And, We've like, like at nighttime. And they like, yeah. almost, like, run into us. And we're like, it's you. Danny? <laughs> yeah. Hi. He's like, there's a ghost. <laughs> Moving along. He probably looked at his friends and was like, I don't know them. <laughs> now nah, we were cute. He's probably like, yeah, my, my mom's. No, he wouldn't talk like that. <laughs> That's not that's not normal. This, that, ep this episode's kind of weird today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I think it's the hats. It's the hats. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Officially moving along. Okay. I'm leaving my husband because I found out that he has been making fun of me behind my back to his ex. My husband, male 45, and I, female 36, met about six years ago. We've been married for one year. When we met, I was very fit and athletic, 
I started gaining weight, however, after suffering two miscarriages and the loss of my mother to cancer. I was very depressed and barely got out of bed, if not to go to work. I stopped exercising and instead started eating junk food. I gained 40 pounds in two years, 2019 to 2020. Under this time, my husband, then fiance, was very supportive and loving. I felt guilty and tried to give him an out several times, but instead he proposed and we got married last summer. Since our marriage, I've been feeling much better and it showed. I've lost around 20 pounds so far and I gained back my muscles and abs. He was so happy to see me feeling better. On his computer, however, it was a totally different story. No. He was talking almost our entire relationship to his ex-wife about me. His ex-wife, female 46, left him about seven or eight years ago for her colleague. The relationship didn't work, however, and she tried to get back together with my husband. He had already met me, but they stayed friends, mostly via chat and texting since she lives about 12 hours away. My husband was complaining about everything about me, my job, my depression, my cooking, but mostly about my weight. He was telling her how disgusting I was (gasps) to him. How he often found it hard to share the same bed since I snored like a dog. He sent her pictures of me while sleeping. Oh! Sometimes <gasps> in underwear with comments about my belly, double chin, back boobs, etc. What et the fucking fuck? She found these pictures extremely amusing and she came up with the name White Whale. They both found it hilarious and now that is what they referred to me as. What is wrong with people? What? What? I want. How, why and are you married? What are you doing? <laughs> why are you married? What are you doing? <sighs> and it, like, like she said, he literally proposed to her while she was that weight. Why? Like, why? Why would you put her? Th- why would you do that? That's so evil. You're I'm robbing gonna- her time valuable time that she could be with anyone else besides you fuck you continue they don't flirt exactly or talk about being together or starting an affair but they do say that they miss each other and they reminisce about the time they were married she's more flirtatious and he really enjoys it whatever he's telling her isn't what i have experienced with him i don't disgust him he tells me that he loves me all the time we have great and passionate sex And the way he touches and makes love to me is so great. He must be a really good actor if he was really disgusted by me. And he hates the few times we have to sleep apart. He's lying and I don't know why he's doing it. He's lying to one of us and I'm not sure if I want to know who he's lying to and why. I decided to get out of this marriage and leave this behind me. Good. Right now I'm acting like everything is normal, but I've started looking for a new job in another city and a place to rent. I also started with birth control pills in case something happens between us. And I have talked to a lawyer to prepare the divorce and start the process once I'm gone. So she's still sleeping with him. I don't think we really know. But I don't understand why she's saying I started birth control pills. We'll get there. Okay. One thing I'm not going to do is fall back into depression and gain weight again. I will not allow it. What a waste of love he has been. Edit. I can't believe I need to explain this about the birth control pills. Very simple explanation. Up until I went through his messenger, I loved and trusted this guy. We had a great sex life and we were trying to conceive. When I read what he has written and the way he took pictures of me sleeping, all like a shit ton of exclamation marks, something happened inside of me. Like I don't know this person in front of me anymore. I can't read his face and I don't trust him. I don't know how long I'm going to need to stay under the same roof as him. I don't know what his reaction would be if I refused him under a long period of time with no real excuse. I don't know what else he's capable of besides taking pictures of sleeping people. I don't know if I, in a moment of weakness, succumb to lust, or if he for a moment could fool me that he actually loved me. For all these reasons and many darker scenarios I have played in my head, I'm taking extra precautions. Okay. This was kind of mean of her. What? Anyone with an IQ of a chicken could understand that, <laughs> or so I hope. Which one of the hat options was a chicken? So yeah, good thing you didn't put that one on. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wish I did. <laughs> Just sitting here like a dumbass. No, I mean I think it's a very fair question because it's like 
the you said you're gonna leave him right when you found out so like why would you even yeah consider we didn't no one entertain the, no that? one here is thinking like oh she's gonna be under the same roof with him for at least six months and she's playing it cool and she might like fall under like lust like i'm i mean that's a pretty normal question yeah and she's a little defensive there but <laughs> it's okay she's it's going through a lot she's going through so <laughs> going through a fuck ton. I'll take it. Oh my I'll god! Take it. I'll take the chicken comment. Do we want the original comment, like the original top comment on the post? I think we want it all. This one's interesting. This one's crazy. Yeah. It was posted about two months ago, by the way. She goes on to say after the chicken comment, "Thank you everyone for the support. I will update you when I know more and where I'm headed." Top comment, I'm proud of you for leaving. Stick to your plan and be done with him. I can't even fathom the gut punch reading White Whale was. Definitely make sure to screenshot and print out the conversations for when you make your exit. Block him, block his family if need be, because you never know what kind of crazy story you could make up. And most importantly, take care of yourself. We're rooting for you. Well, and this kind of reminds me of the feeling that I had whenever I've I brought this up multiple times now, but like when I found out somebody that I thought was a best friend and I was living with for years had been stealing from me. And it was like this thing where, it, well, I just, I wanted to just exit. Like I didn't even, I just you didn't was, even want to confront them. You just wanted to be gone. I wanted to just continue, like move on and start living because I, like I've said, it fucked with me so much because I started thinking I was losing my mind. I'm like, how are these things missing? Like, what is happening? Because I trusted everyone. I didn't even think that somebody was stealing from me. I just thought that I was losing my shit. Like, And so it was such a relief to finally be like, well, this is the truth. I know the truth. Now I just want to move on with my life. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of that with this situation where she's just like, I've been wasting my time with someone who I didn't even know. I thought I knew this person. And if you can either lie to me or to her, that extreme and like send vulnerable pictures of me that's like text is that's, one thing that's abuse like that yes, is it is that's horrific well and like i think the text is one thing because like words whatever like words hurt but to the pictures take pictures of someone yeah in a vulnerable intimate position while oh, they're God. sleeping in their home in their room this is why i don't sleep naked my belly would be out like i can't i need a big t-shirt i need to be comfy in my big t-shirt and my men's like I never, manscaped I boxer briefs <laughs> that was not an ad <laughs> no i just i actually live in them like i um, i live in them i want to try some i've never tried them um I'll, I'll get some for you okay yeah let's do it but like i i you shouldn't have to like worry about what you're sleeping in like you should be able to like comfortably sleep in your home with your husband and not worried about him sending pictures to his ex-wife calling you a fucking so white whale fucked up and and of all people his ex-wife why i think there's something deeply wrong with him whether that's insecurity and he needs his ex-wife's reassurance oh yeah oh yeah so it didn't she say that his ex-wife le left him yeah yeah and it had reminds, an with a colleague yeah and it reminds me of somebody that i know <laughs> anyway it reminds me of somebody I, that I, I don't know that's a good thing because i don't want it to be obvious but it reminds me of somebody i know and it just it feels like this like need because you're so wronged by your ex that like you need to get their oh. approval even yeah. though you like whatever it is but you're just like fiending for that approval because you're so deeply like scarred, scarred from that from person something. yeah yeah it's almost like he needs her reassurance or validation to just even like to live feel normal yeah because I kind of believe for some weird reason, I believe that he means it with his wife. And I feel like it's this weird, like he's getting off by like, or like getting his confidence yeah, from by that. his ex-wife. I could see that. But loves his wife. I could see it. Which is still fucked up. Like no, leave him well, still. <laughs> and it's also like, it doesn't make sense really. If you have this amazing, happy relationship and you love your wife and sex is great and your life is great. Why do you even feel the need that you need that reassurance and that confidence boost. Like what is so missing in your, honestly, I just like, again, the way people's neurons fire. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Well, I was, I was actually talking about this. I've, I haven't, I've had a couple of true heartbreaks, but that's, it's, that's more rare. Like for me to just be like truly heartbroken. But what happens to me a lot is like, I get ego broken. It's like, okay. Yeah, it's this thing where I'm like, it's not about them. It's about feeling like putting my value and worth into what they think about me. And then, so if they like, 
if it doesn't pan out how I, I think it should or how I want it to, then it's like my ego is broken and I just feel shitty. And I like, it's. Yeah, it's, no, that makes sense. It, it does make sense. Cause like as hard as it is to not seek validation from like external sources, mm-hmm. like we all do it at yeah. times. Like when you go out and you try to look good and like, oh, I'm not feeling like good in this dress. I don't feel good in this dress, mm-hmm. but I'm going out and blah, blah, blah. And then when you have someone like, not like respond well to you it's like oh like you just feel even worse Mm -hmm. like I get that yeah it's yeah it's hard well so it's like even though this guy like let's say you know he's so happy with his wife but his ego has been so shattered that he doesn't know how to pick the pieces back up and so he goes back and tries to fix it where it was lost yeah I don't know. It's just, you know, theories. I don't get it either. But I don't even understand how they reconnected because like your ex-wife left you for a colleague. It didn't work out. She tried to get back together with him. But like... That's probably it. And then he probably was, was like really entertained by the fact that she tried to get back together. Probably made him feel good. And so then he was like, wait, I like this feeling. And then kind of just dangled it along. He needed that validation. Yeah. I hope he gets some help. Me too. Okay, but we do have some edits. Okay. I have now left my husband and served him the papers. White whale out. Hi again. I don't know how to make an update, but my original post is on my profile. Sorry if I'm using the wrong terminology for Reddit, but I'm feeling happy. So happy for the first time in weeks. And I wanted to share that with you since so many of you supported me and requested an update. I thought it would be the decent thing to do. So here comes nothing. I didn't pry or spy on my husband. I used his MacBook to do some work, and he had forgotten to log out from Facebook and Messenger. He has never given me any reason to spy on him. After I found out, however, I would occasionally check his phone, maybe hoping that it was all a bad joke. He continued complaining anyhow, and now he was telling her I was being distant and cold in manner. Jesus, how much is he filling this girl in? And that he was tired of me. He even lied and told her I was gaining even more weight, even though I'm not. He told her we weren't having sex. I avoided him because he couldn't find it under the rolls of fat. Wow. A joke that she highly appreciated. I didn't spy after that. I like how she says that. Like when she's like, she really appreciated that one. (laughs) I'm sure she could tell based on her response being like, (laughs) no, I know, but I I just like how she's just like, like she she, really appreciated it. I do. I like how she puts that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I didn't spy on him after that. I got the confirmation I needed. In the meantime, he acted the worried husband with me, concerned about me and asking if I was going through a new depression. He told me he loved me and that he was here for me. What he a did psycho. Actually. <laughs> Pouring another one of that. <laughs> yeah. Get me while you're at it. He did everything like previous times I had dips, called from work, came home with takeouts and from my favorite restaurants, did all the cleaning and washing around the house, baked fresh bread in the mornings, flowers and chocolate, and asked me if I wanted to go for nighttime drives and walks. He used to take me for a drive the nights I was feeling very down and depressed. How can anyone be so two-faced? To be honest, this makes me feel like we should not... What is it called? Hmm. It makes me feel like we should support the act of looking through people's stuff. (laughs) this is like do you know what i mean because it's like how long could she like would she have lived with this fucking liar i think they would have gone on the rest of their lives yeah i truly believe that and that that is sickening to me i think there is seriously like there's something really going on here so this makes me feel like i don't care how much like we trust each other at one point like unprovoked we need to break through each other's shit (laughs) I don't God, I we know. We do like every like every four years, like a presidential election, like just to like just check quick in. check in, <laughs> quick peek at the recent messages. Yeah, I don't. And I've talked about this a lot. I don't believe in going through your partner's phone. But like, I think this is kind of a new fear unlocked. Yeah. And I that comes up a lot in these episodes where I'm like, holy fuck, new fear unlocked. But like, this is one of those because this is just it. Like, I love you you gaining weight doesn't affect me like sex is still great like still cares still does like cute things if i'm Mm -hmm. sad he's like even more supportive and i'm like i don't i would be wrecked if i looked on his phone and he was calling me a white whale yeah like i don't even care what color like i am you know whatever white but like just a whale like i am very (laughs) self-conscious about my weight (laughs) did you just say i don't care what color (laughs) yeah like the color doesn't matter I like 
<laughs> but why like why did he pick white because she's white like why did the color like why didn't they yeah. just go with whale like, i think i, oh, I think i told beluga look at this beluga bitch yeah like i don't know i just a white whale it just is really mm. sad to me because i i do relate to the like depression and the body insecurity and gaining weight when you're having a tough time and to just have someone who's supposed to love you and then he had a chance like she gave him an out and then he's proposed so it's like what's your excuse right i what's know your her, excuse? her saying that it's not like that yeah there's literally not like that would be an excuse but there's just there's no excuse he needs help after like she goes all bold how can anyone be so too two-faced i have my big sister who lives in another city i told her that i was leaving my husband and that i was looking for jobs in her city my sister is married and she lives with her husband and daughter in a big house she offered me one of her spare bedrooms. I got a few job interviews and one of them turned into an offer. It's not exactly my field of work and it came with a significant decrease in salary, but I thought about it and it's a good start until something more suitable comes up. I didn't want to prolong my stay with him any longer and decrease in income is a good sacrifice. Plus, I'm going to have lower rent and I'm selling my car since the new job is walking distance from my sister's house. So no more worry about the crazy gas prices. My new job starts on October 1st. I'm working my notice period from my computer. The two months between jobs, I'm just going to have fun and work on myself. I took my name off the lease, but I'm going to pay two more months. I left him last Sunday. The night before, I prepared a very nice dinner, and I fucked his brains out all night. Okay, there's the birth control. <laughs> hey. It felt so good to hear him whispering how much he loved me and how lucky he was to have me. In the morning... I left the divorce papers and my attorney's number in the kitchen. <sighs> wow. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, just badass. <laughs> when I got to my sister, I finally could tell her and the rest of my family about everything. I showed them all of his conversations and even the picture he's taken of me. They're all pissed at him. He's been calling and texting obsessively, but he doesn't know where I live now. Emailed, DM. He went to my parents, but they just shunned him at the door Good. and advised him to let me go. Maybe he knows now because he's been asking to explain and apologize, etc. I don't care. All I've texted back mm. is that if he wants to convey a message, he could do it through my lawyer. Oh, I love it. Ooh, I love it. Baby. That's <laughs> a satisfying one. That is amazing. Okay, but question. Do I have a villain brain for the fact that like my thought is have hold some type of event for him? Invite all of his colleagues invite everyone like let's say it's his birthday and have a big screen and say you're gonna do a slideshow oh god of some of the best moments that you guys have had in your marriage do a couple of them and then screenshots of all of the things that he has said to his ex-wife why do i love that did you see the thing on um <laughs> it was going around on tiktok recently and it's it's really hard to kind of tell what it is because it's it was posted i saw the original and not a repost or articles on it but it's in um it's from a wedding in china i believe it's china and they're speaking mandarin or whatever language it is i need to get on babel more apparently and um the groom all of a sudden starts playing a video projection as they're standing up at the altar and it's a video of the um the, the woman cheating on him oh my god with someone else like an actual like at, at their wedding how did he get the video he got that video was she like making out with him i don't know i didn't you couldn't really see like it just showed like the like a portion of the screen and all of a sudden you see the video come on and she takes her flowers and just like fucking flips <laughs> and oh, so now there's wow. like articles and stuff on it oh my but, god i need to read that but that that's kind of what you're that's yeah, yeah. i like and okay i this sounds weird, but I the reason I know it sounds like really kind of oh my god, what's the word? Insane. Yeah, but I think <laughs> that like if I was doing something so shitty to somebody, like you deserve so, it. Yeah, and then and then they were to expose me in front of everyone, I would honestly feel like I fucking deserve it. Like I deserve that. Like this is what I did. It was shitty. And you made your bed lay in it. Yeah. The only thing is if he was, if she was like having sex with someone and he shared that, I would not, that would not be okay. But like, if it was just like, she was making out with someone or was like, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't think it was super graphic. No sharing porno. Absolutely not. But like, 
something else like that. Yeah. <laughs> the text messages. Yeah. This is, I, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, and like she like truly signed off or like someone signed off for her. Her Reddit account is now deleted. Um, but the top comment on the update was, just read the original post. I would have left that jerk too. Good luck to you moving forward. Yeah. Um, this is the update I'm waiting for. I feel glad for you. And, oh, OP respond. Or at least I think it's OP. You can't be certain because um, where it would say username, it says deleted now. Thank you. It feels like a big weight has been lifted off my chest when I finally left our apartment. Good for her. I just like, I hope he knows. Oh, he knows. I hope he knows how caught he was. I know. And that's why I want to have a whole slideshow. Tell her to call me. I <laughs> I really would. I think if it were me in this situation, like I know I'm, I've said it a lot where like sometimes I don't need closure, but I think in this circumstance, I would want to like have him have just like a, a small ounce of embarrassment that yeah. he like, he put like me through by taking those pictures and yeah. treating me that way and making me like, I don't get it. I don't get this one, but I feel like we all deserve to be like called out when we're doing something shitty that we just like don't even think about how much it'd be so hurtful if like it were to be known. Yeah. And yeah, maybe not so extreme, but like in some way, shape or form, we deserve to be called out on being shitty as humans. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people do it to us in the comments sometimes. <laughs> I have a smile on my face. I'm I'm mostly kidding. Um, and I was like zoning out. I was like very much so disassociating just now a little bit. And I know I'm probably not using that in the right way, but I have like really weird like like zone outs lately. It's kind of scary. I feel like something's wrong with my brain. I'm gonna go get a full body scan. I just need to like wow. make sure I'm not riddled with cancer. It's like really stressing let, me out. Let me know where you go and if you like it, I would. I want to do one. I, I'm I, like, I think it's just worth the investment. I don't care if I have to put on my credit card to afford it. Like I want it. I need to know just with all the mm -hmm. cancer going around in my family. I just like, I need to know. Um, but yeah, the reason why this one is in this theme too, mostly like because of like deep wounds, like I think going forward for her, like I'm really happy for her. She got out like the way she mm -hmm. executed her plan. Amazing. Everyone take notes. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people would confront their partner and not just serve divorce papers and yeah. like easily be convinced. But totally. I also like someone that can do that to you for years. Honestly, like I, I get what she was saying about the birth control because like I don't know what he's capable of anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, that absolutely. Like I'm scared. You don't know if he can lie like this about exactly. me. I also like. And, and that, that's what goes through your brain when yeah. you're so betrayed by somebody or like deceived by someone when you see two different personalities. It's it like, almost is like he's Jekyll and Hyde. Then you he's have two no people. idea what they're capable of. Exactly. At all. Well, oh God, I just forgot. It's like you thought you knew someone so deeply for however many years, and then you found out they're hiding such a huge part of themselves that's evil towards you. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's like... And you also know he's like blatantly lying. Like when he was saying like oh she's being cold she's ignoring me oh also she's gaining more weight right when she wasn't gaining weight so it's like she already knows he's lying to her but then he's lying on top of the lies like right he doesn't need to lie to her she doesn't that ex-wife doesn't see op how like what what are you doing that for you already have your inside white whale joke what are you doing it for probably because he thinks that if he tells the ex-wife that my wife like my wife's being shitty towards me but not because I'm like a bad person, just because she's depressed and she's gaining weight. Do you know what I mean? It makes him like probably it's not on him. Yeah. It's to it like clarify up, like she's having issues. Eases up that security. Yeah. It, takes, it takes any blame off him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> wow. But yeah, um, deep wounds to like dating going forward. How would you date and like even trust someone again after this? Well, when and someone you like married was capable of doing this to you. But I've been thinking about this actually like since the last time I was here and that horrific car accident that happened very close to your house and what you said it's just like I don't know if I leave here today and I die I don't know that and so it's like these moments when it for her it probably was scary like it's probably like this is what I know this is who I love I see him he speaks to me in this way and it feels right to like just move forward and try to work through this yeah but it's like 
life is so short. There is no time to waste on just trying to make something like that work. No. You know, and it's scary to to get away from it because it's what you know, but it's worth it. Because you just don't know how much how much time we have and it's like that is so much unhappiness and so much miserable shit that you'd have to work through to even try to you know and i'm not saying yeah. like divorce not like the first like issue absolutely not like it this relationships are hard issue. yeah they're hard work and the, you know there's a lot of things that you have to work through when you're with a partner but but something like this this is i'm just i'm happy for her too and i'm proud of her to just get up and move on I, it takes a lot of courage. I am too. And I, I completely agree with what you're saying because you can put that in a lot of different circumstances, like even a minor breakup where it's it's like, why dwell? Like, why waste any more time when this person was cheating on you or going behind your back and lying and manipulating you or whatever? Like, whatever the circumstances, if it's a negative relationship and truly wasn't mm-hmm. healthy by any means. Small bumps in the road, yeah, you can work past them. Mm-hmm. But... It's like, why waste any more of your time? Like, yeah. life is too unpredictable and it's not worth it to be anything less than wholeheartedly loved, appreciated, communicated with openly, yeah. and respected. Yeah. Like, I just responded to um, a write in for USA Today and she was like, I moved my entire life for him. I uprooted my life. I quit mm-hmm. my job. I moved to where he was. I started from scratch, essentially. And then he broke up with me. Yeah. What do I do now? And it's like, well, you have two choices. You either stay or go back. And if you stay, start building a life for yourself that yeah. is fulfilled and happy without him. Yeah. Do not stay. If you're going to stay, do not stay there with any hope that he's going to come back. Right. And, and he will. He absolutely will. Right. They always come back. They always do. They always come back. I'm sorry. I didn't realize what I had. I'm so sorry I made that mistake. I didn't appreciate you. I really fucked up. They always come back. No matter who you are or what the situation, like an ex will always come back one way or another. And it's up to you if you're going to let them or if you're going to realize your worth and that you deserve more. Damn. <laughs> I was so <laughs> heated. And that's her. And so, yeah, I'm I'm really happy for her. Oof. Yeah. I, oof, sorry, I'm getting so hot. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> blanket. <laughs> Hold on. You're ditching the hat. It's going to be a knee hat for right now. <laughs> I look so cute on you. <laughs> I'm so hot right now. No, I'm just horsing around by myself. But you're really, really cute. And this is a knee hat now. Hmm. So it's not the same. Okay, well. You'll get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving along. Uh, okay. I feel very unresolved after that one. Still. I know, honestly. I'm like, can we continue to break this down? <laughs> it's just like a lot, but I want an update from her. I'm really sad the account's deleted. I want like an update a year from now being like, I have met this new person and they're amazing and they don't have an ex-wife that they talk to repeatedly every day and call me a white whale. And I know because now I check We're not promoting that. Fine. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think. Fine. (laughs) It is scary though. It is. That is a scary, scary concept that you could. Sorry, continue. That you could just like be married in that deep and like literally not. like Because you trust him. I trust Justin. I have no reason to check Justin's phone or read any messages. Mm -hmm. But the just like the happenstance. It's just crazy. Yeah. I'm just realizing, too, I've actually never looked through somebody's phone besides when I saw over their shoulder Um, because it's not like it's not on purpose. I'm just such a curious person Mm -hmm. that if I'm like right next to someone and they start like texting or like laughing or they're looking at something, I'm like, huh? (laughs) Yeah. And so I was looking over uh, someone's shoulder, saw him messaging something on Instagram that I didn't like. I was like, that's just not a way that I would communicate to other guys. And also, you tell me about all of your friends who are female and everything. You're very open about it. That's not someone I know about. And so then I took their phone and I was like, who's this? And who's this? Damn, you popped (laughs) off. But other than that, I've never looked through on anyone else's phone. Just one moment of weakness. Yeah. I was pissed. I was like, I literally am so respectful when guys dm me i just 
heart their message and move on. I do that too. <laughs> yeah. I just go, haha, thanks for the compliment. Yeah. And I'm like, what is this? Someone messaged me this? like they listened to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Hello, if you're still out there listening. And they were like, if you and Justin ever break up, I'd love to take you out. I'm like, I'm like thanks. I saw <laughs> I just don't know. Like I, I saw a comment know. one time that was like, Yay, Lauren and Jeff broke up, smiley face. <laughs> Like, now's my chance to swoop in. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Just revel in my misery. <laughs> nah, uh, you good. You good. But well, but no, I agree. No no promoting going through phones ever. Okay. I'm glad we're, we're, all, we're all on the same page. Mostly. Hopefully. Maybe. Okay, I, I'm going to take back ever. But... <laughs> can't commit to that <laughs> too solid i'm getting super hot now too but i really like the horse put it on your knee i don't have a knee up i can't because my computer i can you can borrow my other knee <laughs> i'm just kidding no but if you want um something to put your feet out on you could pour the rest of the wine in our cups evenly and then uh -huh. put your feet out on that table because i know how uncomfortable it is sitting with your legs bent up the whole night you can just tell me you want more wine <laughs> that too uh, why is it so oh, hot in here? I love that sound. What? I sound like a dying sheep. I liked it a lot. I feel like I've said too much tonight. I like it. I don't. I need to reel this back in. What's the next story? Am I the asshole for flipping out on my fiance for canceling all the vegan food options from our wedding food menu behind my back? I'm going to go with no. But let's hear it. Okay. My fiance, 31 male, and I, 25 female, are getting married soon. There wasn't much that disagreed on during the wedding planning except for food. Me and my family are vegans. And there are so many reasons why we chose this lifestyle. And one of them being that we have a history of health issues. My fiance and his family are the complete opposite. They're hardcore meat eaters, which is fine by me, obviously. However, when deciding on the wedding food menu, I wanted to add four to five vegan options. My fiance and his mom objected, saying it was a waste of money over food that, quote, isn't real food. They also argued that this would be offensive for their guests <laughs> and suggested my vegan options just be the good old salad and appetizers. His mom wanted cupcakes, lol. I said no. Because for one, it's me and my family who's paying. And two, I want to make my guests feel welcome and not be treated as second-class citizens by being served salad. My fiance made a face and said, isn't that what vegans eat? <laughs> I refused to argue about it and said it was final. The other day, I found out that he had canceled all the vegan options and took them off the menu completely behind my back. What a weirdo. I was seething. I called him at work, but he kept on hanging up on me. I went straight to his workplace and confronted him there and just flipped out on him. He was stunned to see me. He at first said it was his mom's idea, then told me to go home because I was making a scene at the office. The fight continued at home and he defended himself by saying that I sort of made him resort to doing this after I kept brushing off his thoughts and input and refusing to accommodate his family, but there were plenty of meat options. Why? Why can't I get four to five vegan options when I'm paying for it? He yelled that it was his wedding too, not my family's. My family said it was fine and they'll figure it out and told me to let it go, but I refused. Am I the asshole for putting my foot down on this? Am I the asshole for thinking I would want a divorce before getting married? <laughs> How to get divorced before getting <laughs> married. Like, I'm kidding. But this, like, is a, this is a testament to the future they'd yeah, have. Yeah, exactly. Like, that, that is actually very concerning. Extremely concerning. Everything here that he says is like a contradiction to himself. And it also, what also is really annoying is like, is it really just him? Like, is he actually, does he have a mind of his own and he's feeling very strongly about this because maybe he has some insecurity about when he eats meat, he's like... People that are vegan are judging me and I don't want to feel that way. Like maybe he has something like that. But or is it his family that are controlling his little mind to decide to do things and stand up to his wife because he's the man? <laughs> yeah, he definitely does not have big brain energy here. Like, I like that. I like that a lot. That's a thing. That's a thing now. <laughs> is it? I think big brain. I don't brain go on TikTok, so I don't no. know. 
I've never s- if it's a thing I haven't seen. Oh, okay, it. cool. So yeah, this is new. Yeah, cool. Because <laughs> like, there's like his little brain. Like, can he not compute standing up to mom? Like, he <laughs> definitely does not have big brain energy here. And I'm saying that with like a grain of salt. Like, <laughs> yeah, any yeah. family member does he not have the <laughs> ability to stand up to family? Like, it could be anyone. Fill in, fill in the blank with mom, dad, <laughs> grandma, aunt, uncle, kidney, <laughs> fucking donated uncle. Like, I don't fucking care who it is. But yeah, like something's off here. Yeah, and so this whole thing would just really derail me. <laughs> Why did I just go full fucking robot? I don't know, but I really liked it. <laughs> Damn it, that was so embarrassing. <laughs> what the hell, Morgan? I don't know. We're pulling out some weird moves today. Like, both of us <sighs> are saying things that I feel like we normally don't. I don't know what's going on. I like it, but I also don't. <laughs> I'm s- kind of scared. Really scared. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, continue. Um, oh, yeah. No, I, I was just saying that, like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. No, I was just saying that I, I, I'm i kidding. Like, I'm not saying that I would call off the wedding. However, I would, I would definitely question, like, overall, do you respect me? Do you do you need to like follow what your family's telling you what to do or can you make decisions for yourself? Can you have a conversation with me before doing something like this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like or or are you going to go behind my back? Like mm-hmm. all of these things are foreshadowing potential things in the future. So much. And so that's the concern. It's not about like, oh, what type of food? It's like whatever. It's fucking food. Like cool. Also but, like vegan options are good. So good. Have you ever had like an eggplant parmesan i love vegan food it's so i so love vegan good. food i do too i love it and well we also live in los angeles and they have, have so the many options best vegan options i go back to minnesota and i'm like I'm not feeling meat today and they're like oh well we could have a um a what do they call it like a a spring salad where it's like mixed greens and like a couple of cherry tomatoes literally and what cucumber. he said yeah isn't and I'm that like, what vegans eat no also for someone that's your fiance how does he not know what you eat? Oh, are you trying to act tough in front of family? Like, he's isn't like making- salads. Isn't that what vegans eat? <sighs> I think I've said this before, but this is what I really respect about my sister. My sister's vegetarian, but vegan when she's home and vegetarian when she's like traveling because it's harder. Yeah. And out and about because she, she's been to like family gatherings where people are like, I made this vegetarian dish just for you. I'm so excited about it. And she's like, well, it has cheese in it. It's not vegan, but like, I'm going to eat it because I'm not going to be that big of a hassle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which I feel like, like this is, they're vegan for health reason, health reasons, which I totally get too. But I feel like there's kind of like this stigma and maybe it's true, but it's not something I've encountered from the vegans I know. But like vegans, the vegans I know aren't like slam it down your throat. So if you eat a meat, you're eating that meat. That's- Do you know how that cow died? That cow got shot in the head with a nail gun and was <laughs> fucked up. Oh my God. Like, I don't encounter vegans that are like that. <laughs> How'd you just like come up with like such a dark like scenario like that so quick? I um did my... You've seen it. It's I, happened. I did oh, my high school... That's high, unfortunate. I did one of my high school papers on horse slaughter. Mm, okay. So there was, there was some truth behind that. That sucks. Anyway. Terrible. But, um, no, I haven't eaten a burger in three years. Wow. Four years. Okay. Um, well, so anyway, I feel judged by you right now. <laughs> I'm just no. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was, I was playing off oh, of the yeah. conversation. Yeah, it's but like most vegans don't uh-huh. like, they're not at the wedding. Like if everyone has food options they're happy with, no one's going to flip out yeah. or say shit. No, it's a and, wedding. but that's, so with my sister, like I respect so much because she's been vegan vegetarian for so long and she never makes anyone feel guilty or like like yeah we're sitting around eating like a hot dog and which is probably the worst type of meat ever and she's doesn't even bat an eye i just think that people should just let people have their food choices and if you feel passionate about something like speak on it when people want to hear about it right like if people are asking like why are you yeah of course but she's never just like slamming it down someone's throat yeah pun intended (laughs) yeah no i i i love that i appreciate that was funny funny. i kind of missed it oh well like she's not slamming it down your throat like food no like metaphorically but then it also could be the food okay yeah 
It was a cute <laughs> joke, but whatever. <laughs> I'm a little slow today. I haven't slept much. Yeah. Also, don't watch how hot dogs are made. I won't. It's really bad. I'll never do that. Don't do that. Do I that. would get behind Meatless Mondays because cows are actually like cows and factory farming is like one of the biggest carbon oh. contributing things right now. So I would get behind if everyone could commit. We have two hot takes Thursdays and Meatless Mondays. Do you know in Argentina there's more cows than there are people? That's cool. Do they eat them or are they? Oh, they're big cow people. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. They love. So maybe we focus Meatless Mondays towards our Argentinian audience. There's no way. No, no chance. <laughs> no. Shit's on spits all day. Um, yeah, a lot going on here. Also, I just want to point out one comment he made. Continued the fight at home by saying that I sort of made him resort to doing this after I kept brushing off his thoughts and input and refusing to accommodate his family. I'm very confused by that. And I think that's like a common tactic with people that will manipulate words at you. How is his family not being accommodated when they have their meat? Mm -hmm. They're getting their meat. Yeah. There's, there's, there's like no question about the meat. I was trying to do it in an Arby's voice. I don't know what that is. But it's the Arby's slogan. Arby's got the meat. But he's getting the meat. The only difference here is whether her family and even her, what do you want your fiance to eat at your wedding? Do you want your fiance to be like happy, content, whole, full? Like what? You want to do the cha-cha slide on an empty stomach? I don't think so. Like why your family is being accommodated. So why are you using that to like throw back at her and manipulate her? It feels a little gaslighty. Maybe he wants them all to get wasted because they only have salads, and then all of his family will take advantage of all of her family. This is a joke, but... They sound sick. <laughs> so, update. Mm -hmm. So, his mom messaged me earlier to try to get me to listen to what she had to say after I kept ignoring her phone calls. She sent long walls of text just to address what I did at her son's workplace, calling it all kinds of stuff, from immature to unhinged. I will say the work confrontation was it's a borderline unhinged. Wait, it was in front of all of So he kept hanging up on her. So she showed up at his work to confront him and fight. Ooh. So that is a little unhinged, but I will say mm -hmm. I think when it comes to wedding and planning and thinking about how much goes into planning People go crazy. Well, bridezillas are a thing, but I don't think that's necessarily bridezilla because of the fact how much I mean, you have to like give your caterer so much like lead up to prepare for weddings. And so when you have someone cancel like last minute, like um, they're getting married soon. So they don't, she doesn't specify in the post. But if this was like two weeks or three weeks before the wedding and the caterer then says, well, I can't get those vegan options back now yeah, because he canceled. I would be a little unhinged myself, I think. Yeah. And I think sometimes we see red. Oh, so yeah. it's like, nothing else matters you don't care about who's around and what's appropriate and what's not you know like it's especially just especially like, when he keeps hanging up on you yeah if you want to have this if you don't want me to come embarrass you at work communicate <laughs> with me and step out for 15 minutes and answer your fucking yeah. phone so i she's you're right it is it is unhinged however i can i can I sympathize yes <laughs> A she, lot. Th <laughs> she then went to explain how she's noticed that me and my family kept, quote, acting dismissive of her son's input and, quote, contributions to the wedding. She said that she noticed my behavior towards him and her entire family and wanted to speak up earlier, but didn't and tried to keep the peace. She then went on to address the food menu issue and denied her involvement in the cancellation of the vegan option. But that didn't mean she doesn't support her son's decision. Moreover, she thought it was so responsible of him to make that move because of my continual refusal to see how this stuff is a waste of money. That bugs me. I'm going to say it right now. I wonder if there's some type of insecurity on the fact that it's like her side paying for it. You know, We do have another update after this. Okay. We're going to steamroll through. All right. She also pointed out how I kept saying I paid for it and said that technically this isn't just my money. It's mine and his because we're getting married. So she suggested I wisen up and get rid of the my money I paid for it mentality. She must make more than him for that comment. 
She finally mentioned how bad this whole situation is making me look and said that she and her son had already offered a number of compromises that I chose to brush off and decided to make it my weird hill to die on. She said that not only her son is upset, but she and, quote, the family are as well after hearing about it and suggested I just agree on their compromise and be done with it. What compromise are they making? Yeah, that's what I'm a little confused. I wonder if we're actually missing something because we're not. She said four to five vegan options, which is like literally how many? Because usually at weddings, I thought there was like four options total. So I'm kind of confused by that. Depends on how they do it. If there's a seat, if there's a plated dinner, if there's a buffet, some people do food trucks nowadays, which I'm a big fan of. But so the only weddings that I've been to are either a like a buffet style. Or plated. Or plated. And Mm -hmm. with a plated, it's almost always been three, maybe four max. Chicken, chicken, red meat, vegan. Vegan, yes. Or vegetarian. Yes, exactly. They don't really offer vegan. And so that's why I'm kind of confused how this setup was. I'm like, how are there four to five vegan options? You're thinking it's excessive? Well, I'm just confused. I'm like, and then was there just one meat option? So then... I'm not sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I Is guess there like, something we're missing? <laughs> well, I think about it too, and I'm like, oh, if they were vegetarian, like mashed potatoes are typically a side for meat. So there's an option that everyone could eat, but they're not. They're vegan. It's not just vegetarian. So butter and dairy products go into mm. mashed potatoes. So it's a whole different like almost menu that you need to have for yeah. vegan options. Right. So four options on a vegan menu is literally a plate. So, okay, so if it was a buffet, then it's just like... The same kind of proportions that someone would get okay. on a normal plate. I was thinking four to five options of meals. Yeah. Like no, plates. I, think it's I was confused four, I think that. it's four to five different food <laughs> okay. options total. Okay. Which, for a normal, like, other option, you would have meat, chicken, red meat, vegetables, potatoes. Which would all not be vegan dessert. because they probably all have butter on they them and all, stuff. Yeah. All of it has some sort of yeah. animal byproduct in mm-hmm. it. So it makes sense. Like I don't okay. I just we gotta finish we gotta get we gotta just get this yeah, out. Yeah, you're right, you're right. This pissed me off beyond belief. I responded by letting her know that I'm still standing my ground on this, even if I'll have to call the whole wedding off because of it. Because honestly, question mark, this is just ridiculous. It is. My mom and dad, dot, 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 they don't even know what to say anymore. Apparently, my fiance saw my response to her. He's with her and now is trying to call me. But right now, I'm waiting for him to get home and see if he's still insisting on the stance he took. I'll update if there's anything worth adding after we talk. I need to know. Is there not an update? Oh, there's an update. Oh, thank God. There's an update from Miss Sarah Jake 2022. Did she just like put her actual username there? That is the username. I don't know if it's her real name. Update. Didn't realize how long the title was. LOL. So the talk didn't go well. I waited for him to come home so we could have a final conversation about it. But he still insisted on his stance. For more details, his family are a bit on the heavy side. Most of them are obese. Nothing wrong with that. They're perfectly within their right to decide how they live, but they get, quote, easily offended at the mention of the words weight and food. I tried so hard to focus on the issue at hand, but I noticed there was a pattern of this behavior. He said it wasn't true and that this was just an attempt for me to throw past conflicts at him in order to win the current one. He claimed he tried to reason with me about why and how his guests might see those vegan options as, quote, offensive. Also said that his family love food and consider it a big deal and how he didn't want his family to feel like there's certain options that they couldn't touch and feel that there's, quote, difference in how I treat them versus how I treat my family. He then went on to explain how it's just an event and how my family should just accept what's on the menu and if they felt inconvenienced so what it's just one thing they're not going to die if they quote had salad and appetizers oh your family is they're going to die if they if they do (laughs) that is so hypocritical everything he has said in his arguments has been hypocritical he contradicts himself in his own statement 
It's, it's like, beyond frustrating. We don't have to deal with your family's insecurity. They can live their life how they want. If they like to eat that food, that's fine. If your family likes to eat the food that they like to eat, that's fine. You don't have to like change your way and make yourself. It's like that thing that Danielle always posts. You don't have to make yourself smaller to make other people feel good. Yeah. Do yourself. Be Do what makes you happy. What he said wasn't good enough reason for me because his folks are going to think and say what they want. But at the end of the day, it's also my wedding. And to be honest, realizing that my partner himself thinks it's okay to steamroll my opinions and decisions simply because he is prioritizing others and their opinions over me. And that was really upsetting yeah. and not something that could be looked past. Mm -hmm. Normally, I'm a person of rational discussions and compromises. I'm all about compromises. I'd compromise on much bigger matters than just food. But like people said, it's not about the food mm -hmm. anymore, if it ever was. Yep. Like he'd literally lose nothing if he let me have what I wanted. But apparently he was willing to lose it all over this, yep. which is fine by me. I gave him back the ring and called everything off. I just couldn't envision myself living like this any longer. Having to walk on eggshells for his family oh, so and letting him basically override my opinions and have the final say no matter what. Marriage is about compromise. Mm -hmm. And here he has nothing to lose, yet choose to do this to me and my family. Mind you, this is my first serious relationship and I didn't know what to expect. But it's safe to say that he and his mom and family did make it feel like I was taking crazy pills on many, many occasions. So that's that. Last thing he said was that I chose my family over him and ended everything between us for the sake of, quote, keeping him happy. Decision's been made and it's done. Good. Just wanted to give you an update for those who wanted it. Thank you so much for your endless stream of advice and support. Oh, this man I'm so is like, happy for her. Yeah, this is gaslighting. Yeah. You ended it for keeping him happy. You ended it for keeping him happy. Mm -hmm. You're unwilling to compromise. You're unwilling to compromise. Yeah. Also him being like, oh, you're going to make people feel bad because they can't, they don't, they don't know what they can and can't eat. Why can't they eat vegan options? They're probably going to like the vegan options more. Yeah. They taste really good. They do. <laughs> they taste really there, good. I will say there are some shitty dairy-free cheeses out there. The Daya version of dairy-free cheese, not good. I mean, there's shitty versions of every type of food. Exactly. The Trader Joe's almond milk cheese mozzarella shredded incredible so if it's a catering type thing i'm sure they got their vegan recipes down yeah. i'm sure these people are on point yeah it's gonna be good yeah get enough so people don't have to choose vegan or meat they can get what they want problem solved have enough there so that the vegan options the vegan people are guaranteed a meal yeah but then have extra yeah a lot of people let them like if you're doing a buffet style you can take home the extra food mm-hmm <sighs> crazy i'm happy for her um i am too top comment which the update was just posted 13 hours ago which is kind of crazy <laughs> <laughs> my life kind of crazy you kind of sounded like uh oh God, what's her name from easy a uh, and um, you know what i'm talking about right pembergast the character no, no, she's also in Crazy Stupid Love. La La Land. Yeah, what's her I've name? I've never, Emma Stone. Emma Stone, I'm, yeah. I've blanked on an actress's name harder. But, I know the names. I might not pronounce them right, but I know them. Ooh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, pronounce Emma, pronounce her Emma name. Emma Stone, yeah, it was Ooh, good. Ooh, nailed that one. Emma Stone. <laughs> Emma Stone. Yeah. We're psycho today. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Okay. What were you going to say? <laughs> I don't know. Where were we? Uh, top comment. Good for you. Marriage is about compromise. And it doesn't sound like your ex is interested in compromising or even letting you have a say in things. That isn't a partnership. Oh, we're reveling over the fact that I found this 13 hours ago and I feel like the biggest badass in the mm. world. OP responds. Thank you. And you're right. Honestly, I felt kind of hesitant about posting an update. In fact, I was hesitant about posting about my situation as a whole. Normally, I'm not the type to share my private business online, but I was desperate. Like I said, there were times where his family made me feel like I was taking crazy pills. Honestly, and I'm going to say this anyways, I hate them. They always made me feel like an outsider and a stranger. Never really warmed up to me and instead pretended to like me. 
but it was obvious they resented me. They claim that I'm a covert, fat phobic, but in reality, I got mocked, along with my family, for being underweight due to health issues I'd mentioned before. Don't even get me started on ex-future mother-in-law, though I feel as though I gotta let it all out and vent. <laughs> Keep it coming. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, well, this, it kind of reminds me of what I've said in another episode where it's just like I was eating really unhealthy and then I started eating really healthy and I felt really good about myself. I was like, mm-hmm. wow, because I used to take Adderall and I stopped taking Adderall. So I was like, I'm going to focus on just like putting like energizing things into myself. And then I had somebody making fun of me for what I was eating. And I was just like as if it was so bad and stupid. And I was just like wait, no, I should feel good about this. I'm doing good things. And that's what that reminds me of, where it's just like, why are you coming at her for like her weight and her lifestyle? You know, I just don't understand. And this relates to all, all aspects of life, especially like politically. I really don't understand why we need to be so involved in other people's business. It's because, and that's why I'm like, like referencing this is it's because if somebody else is doing something different than us, so feel, different, then we question if what we're doing yeah. is right or wrong. And to make sure that we're right, we tell the other person that they're wrong. Well, okay. So this is kind of like, I just saw this thing and it's like, it's on TikTok and it was like, um, it was a story about like this guy who was like, or it was a, okay. It was so many levels of a stitch that it was like, it's kind of feel like an inception TikTok right now. But essentially this girl was like, Hey babe, do you want to go get a milkshake? And he's like, no, but I'll get you one. <laughs> and then, you sent me that. And then the girl was like, ah, ah, and like upset about it. <laughs> and so someone yeah. like stitched it and go, mm-hmm. it's a guy. And he goes, hey, buddy, let me break this down for you. When your girl is asking you for a milkshake, she has essentially a tiny voice in her head that's saying, get a milkshake. But then she's got another voice that says, you don't need a milkshake. Don't get the milkshake. She's just looking for an accomplice. Mm -hmm. She's looking for permission to have that milkshake. Mm -hmm. And you could boil it down to that with this story. Like, I'm not, I don't want to imply anything. Like, that's an assumption. But otherwise, like, I don't understand the control about what other people are eating. Right. Like, there's something else going on with Mm -hmm. this family where maybe they do feel bad. Mm -hmm. Maybe they aren't happy. And if they are happy with their choices, then why the need to control others? Yeah. So... There's just exactly. that. But I think it's really good to like remember and take a step back sometimes and just think, okay, whatever this person does or doesn't do, whatever they eat or don't eat does not change me in mm-hmm. any way, shape or form. So take a deep breath and move on. And not just with eating, anything. Yeah. Anything. If this person gets a promotion in their job, my friend, if they get a promotion in their job. Yeah. That does not change who I am. It doesn't. I know. We have like such a, we're very, and I, I'm saying this like, at least f- me, I feel like this. I feel like a lot of us out there are very quick to like, we compare. We do compare oh, others. Yeah. And we take what other people are doing like personally as like a negative against us. And mm-hmm. it's like, no, we can't compare. We're all at different places. We all want different things. We all do different things. It's like, but it's, it is really hard. I, I honestly think it's like more innate in humans to like feel that feeling first and that's why i think it's important to take a deep breath and think okay my friend who just got a promotion at their job i'm really happy for them that's amazing that shouldn't make me upset that should inspire me in whatever i want to do yeah and be completely separate entities i will just say i'm like going through op's comments and Mm -hmm. there's not too many on them it looks like there's just six but um for clarification on options aside from the vegan we have six options with meat. Okay. So that's a lot of meat. Yeah. No, that clarified the question I had earlier. His <laughs> his mom picked one option. I'm paying for the whole thing. Frankly, yeah. I have no idea why his mom feels so strongly about getting involved. I only included in wedding planning only because I respect her. But I guess it's like they say, give an inch and they'll take a mile. He said it's his wedding. I, I'm just going to read the comments because I just in case this gets deleted or OP deletes her comment whatever i just want everyone to be able to see him he said it was his wedding too as a way to get back at me i guess yes i noticed he and his mom agreed to come against me on this um i read the one thank you and you're right honestly blah 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 and so op responds to someone else on the update and says like you go girl dude 100 laid out a roadmap where his 
where only his opinion matters and yours are, is irrelevant. This probably wasn't the first time, but it for sure would not be the last. Exactly. Like I said, I'd notice a pattern of this behavior, but kept rationalizing it, which was a huge mistake on my part. It's been utter torture trying to please him and his family. I'm an emotional mess right now, but there's this little voice of reassurance telling me I've gone through the worst and survived it. Hmm. I'm so thankful this happened. It helped me see things clearer. Oh, I want to hug her. Happy for her. Me too. Last but not least, this is a very deep wound, but like kind of like supposed to be a palate cleanser in the sense that like people can be amazing in such dark times. Okay. Um, it's from Twitter actually. And it was posted by Jen Rose Smith. The username is Jen Rose Smith VT. And I'll post on the YouTube. I'll try to post the screenshots because there's amazing pictures that I think like make this whole story. Um, I'll post them on Instagram too after. This is an, a reminder to me to make an Instagram post with the pictures of these tweets because it it, it is amazing. I was... I'm going to cry thinking about it and I haven't even started reading yet, but I was bawling my eyes out when I read it on Twitter. Damn. So a day after we took this two years ago, my dad fell to his death in the Olympic mountains. I miss him terribly. After he died, though, an astonishing thing happened that still fills me with gratitude and hope. Here's how three strangers. It's really good. OK, I'm going to be OK. I'm going to get through it. Here's how three strangers saved this photo from being lost forever. And it's a, a picture of her and her dad. Mm. The accident. On the second day of the week-long Bailey Range Traverse, a backcountry hike, our party of five got off route and my dad fell down a steep gully. He tumbled out of sight. I dropped my pack and climbed downwards over steep scree towards the place where he disappeared. He died in the fall, his body stopping tenuously above yet another drop. We struggled to move him amid sliding scree. There was serious rockfall. Later, a team from Naswi Sar winched my dad, then me, out of that gully into a black hawk. The pack was the last thing on my mind. Both Naswi Sar and Olympic NP showed so much compassion that day. The Navy SAR team lowered from a hovering helicopter into an unstable situation. Staff from the Olympic National Park met me at the helipad, brought me to a quiet place, called a funeral home. You're killing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Okay, sorry for that brief interruption. I've composed myself now. Staff from the Olympic National Park met me at the helipad, brought me to a quiet place, called a funeral home, booked a hotel. In the stunned days after my dad's death, I began to bitterly regret the loss of the final images of his life. They were on my cell phone, in my backpack, at the top of the gully. Strapped to the outside of my pack was an ice axe my dad carried for more than 50 years. Meanwhile, after driving us to the trailhead, my mom had met a friendly family from Forks, Washington. They'd done the Bailey Range Traverse multiple times, and we exchanged phone numbers. A week after my dad's death, she said, quote, I want to ask them if they'll look for your pack. That seemed totally wild to me, unreasonable, but I didn't want to shut her down. We were all off the hinges with grief and shock and trauma. Who was I to tell her what she could do? I felt sure they would say no. Anyways, she called, quote, we'll pray about it, they said. Some orientation, the Bailey Range Traverse is not a well-built trail. It's just a route. When my dad fell, we were a little off that route. It was a day and a half from the road. I didn't know exactly where. My pack weighed at least 50 pounds. They called back to say they were going in. Three members of that family walked for four days, two in and two out, to look for my pack. I worried for their safety. I thought they'd never find it. Then the phone rang. Fucking A, keep it together, bitch! <laughs> They found it, split the pack up three ways, and carried it all back out. They walked for four days. Every day, I see that last selfie I took with my dad. It's pinned to the wall by my desk. But my favorite of the rescued photos is this one, from the morning of his death. He's studying a map at dawn, sitting in a field of avalanche lilies. In the background is Mount Olympus. 
<laughs> no, if you lose it, <laughs> I'm going to lose it again. He spent a lifetime seeking out high places and taught me to love them too. Once he told me, quote, if I die someday in the mountains, I won't think I've chosen the wrong life. I don't think he did either. <laughs> so much gratitude for Naswisar who answered my SOS and Olympic NP staff who met us with compassion. This family's extraordinary generosity will touch me for the rest of my life. When I remember my dad, I remember them too. <laughs> Kindness always matters. Oh, that's so beautiful. It really is, Lauren. <laughs> and that's it for this episode of Deep Wounds. These emotional support animals did nothing but make us crazier. <laughs> they really did. They didn't help in any positive way. Oof. Isn't that beautiful? So beautiful. And to like, I like, I just can imagine like the first thing you're concerned with in that moment is like, fuck your stuff. Like you got to like rappel down and like make sure your dad's okay. And then like yeah. afterwards when, you know, he's gone, you're just like, fuck, I just lost like the last bit of him that I had. And the pictures are beautiful. You'll see them on YouTube or the Two Hot Takes Instagram. Um, I'll be sure to post them so you guys can see them if you're listeners. But life is full of these stories that shape us and cause these deep wounds and trauma and it's what we can make out of it and how we can heal and live the rest of our life happy happily as possible well and i i honest i like that you ended with that because i do think it's a good reminder after a lot of the stories that we talk about that humans humans are amazing too yeah you know <laughs> Um, that family that went in after just meeting them passing on the trail yeah it was a blink it was a blink they ju they just met them and saw them in their darkest moment it was a blink and they were willing to go risk their lives because her dad died on that where they left that pack yeah. that's how he fell and died and they were willing to risk their lives and walk four days for complete strangers that's amazing amazing Sorry, I interrupted you. I'm just like, this, no, this no, story, no. like that when was... I read it, I'm like, I'm so glad I, I accidentally opened up that folder today when I was like going mm -hmm. through my panic before we started and I couldn't get my stories to load. Yeah. I accidentally opened that folder and I was like, oh my God, like, thank God I did because I, the tweet, when I liked it, there were only 12,000 likes on mm -hmm. that tweet from the screen grabs. So I don't know how far it made it, but I think it's a story that is so incredible. Yeah. Well, I want you to right. finish what you were saying. I interrupted you. You were saying humans and something important. No, no. What you said was great. That's, I mean, I, no, I, I just think it's really important after we talk about these crazy ass fucking Reddit stories. It's great to remember how selfless and kind humans can be. And it's really Absolutely. beautiful to hear stories like this. So I'm glad that you shared. Sorry, it caused us all undue emotional duress. <laughs> I know, and it's kind of, I like, and I was thinking about it too because it's I, not a good palate cleanser. Or like, I feel well, like we need another one to like recoup after that one. No, but I feel like I should remind everyone too who's not looking at the video that I was laugh crying. <laughs> I think like, we're like, both like, because I, I know you were laughing at me trying to say sliding and I kept saying sliming. No, I know, but they're like every, anyway, it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah. Great episode. <laughs> God damn Good it. talk. Good talk. Good talk. Yeah, no. Um, that's it. That's it. Be sure to check out Patreon because there's even more stories coming from this theme. I mean, my folder is a it's a full, full folder. So be sure to check out the Patreon. But uh other than that, this will be released in September. We are going to have a tie-dye party at the end of September. So for those of you that order merch from Fanjoy, we have like a white crew neck available, a black sweatshirt. Um, so we're going to be doing a tie-dye party. So if you order the black sweatshirt, you could choose to bleach it. Or if you order the white, you could actually tie-dye, whatever you want to do. Okay, I love this. This is the first that I'm hearing of this. Yeah, this is going to be great. So it's going to be planned for the end of September. 
everyone's included. I've ordered merch for everyone to be here. So we all have stuff to tie dye. I'm invited. You're invited. I'm invited. (laughs) (laughs) Probably. Um, But yeah, tie dye party. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be end of September. It's going to be included for everyone that buys merch. Um, I'm getting, I was planning on getting the emails of people that bought merch from Fanjoy to make sure that like, like everyone who has bought merch can like actually be included. Yeah. Um, So that was my plan for that. So get ahead of it and order your white sweatshirts or whatever you want to get so you can get it in time and be included in the fun little party. That sounds so fun. I'm actually excited. I'm pumped. I'm like going to get so crafty. I ordered a stone colored tie dye kit. So it's not rainbow. It's stone neutrals going to be beautiful. Huh? But I got to pee. Love you all. Thank you for putting up with my crying per usual. Please don't leave me more mean reviews about crying because <laughs> it just like is so sad. Like one, I cry and I'm vulnerable in front of you. And then you go leave me a one star review because I cried on a podcast. Grow up. <laughs> just kidding. Grow up and start crying. <sighs> Embrace the tears. Embrace the feelings. Love you all. Love you. Until next time. Bye. Bye.